One of my favorite organelles is the cytoskeleton. I like the cytoskeleton because it's involved in so many really important functions and in general, I think it's under-discussed and under-appreciated. The cytoskeleton does for the cell a lot of the same things that our skeleton does for us. First, it helps to provide strength to the cell. Second, it's important for maintaining the shape and the structure of the cell. Without a cytoskeleton, we wouldn't have a way for any of our cells to maintain a unique shape that it may need to carry out a specific function, and it would be a lot harder to organize the components within the cell. A third really important function of the cytoskeleton is to allow the movement of material within a cell. The items in a cell don't just randomly bounce around to wherever they need to go. A lot of them are transported specifically along the cytoskeleton. A fourth function of the cytoskeleton in some cells is to allow movement, either through the movement of a part of the cell, like moving a flagellum in the sperm, or moving cilia and respiratory tract cells, or through rearranging the cytoskeleton to allow the movement of a cell, like the white blood cells that are able to squeeze out of blood vessels based on cytoskeletal rearrangements. Let's take a look at the structure of the cytoskeleton that allows it to carry out all of these different functions. The basic structure of the cytoskeleton is a network of protein filaments. These are long, thin proteins that are formed together into networks within the cell. There are three main types of these protein filaments, and they each have their own important functions. We have microtubules, shown in this photograph in green. We have microfilaments, shown in red. And we have intermediate filaments over here in yellow. Let's take a closer look at microtubules. The main function of microtubules is movement both movement of things within a cell and also movement of the cell. Microtubules are made of proteins called tubulin. Microtubules are both the longest and the thickest of the cytoskeletal filaments. Microtubules form a network that starts near the nucleus and then extends out towards the edges of the cell. And this network creates a highway of sorts for moving material around within the cell. There are special sorts of proteins called motor proteins that have the ability to crawl along microtubules. So you can hook any sort of cargo, a vesicle or another organelle, to a motor protein, and the motor protein then crawls its way along the microtubules. There are some types of motor proteins that start near the nucleus and crawl out toward the edges of the cell, and there are other motor proteins that start toward the edges and move back in towards the middle of the cell. So we can carry things out and we can carry them back in again. Two of these motor proteins are kinesin and dynein. And I think it's amazing to see how they actually change shape to move along the microtubules carrying their cargo. Microtubules are also important in moving the whole cell. Microtubules are the main component of flagella, which are long tails, and cilia, which are short hair-like structures. We don't have a lot of cells with flagella in humans, but one important one is the sperm. And the sperm tail, which allows the sperm to swim through the female reproductive tract to reach the egg, is made of microtubules. These microtubules are arranged in a ring, and dynein moves along these microtubules to cause the tail to wave so that the sperm can swim. We have other cells that have cilia, cells lining the respiratory tract, and lining the uterine tube in the female reproductive tract have cilia on them. The cilia, these hair-like structures on the surfaces of these cells, contain microtubules that wave to help move substances along the surface of those cells. The second type of cytoskeletal filaments are the microfilaments. The importance of the microfilaments is helping to provide structure and shape to the cell. We tend to find these microfilaments in a network throughout the cell, but especially concentrated under the plasma membrane where they help support the shape. Microfilaments are shorter and thinner than microtubules, and they're made of the protein actin. 
These actin microfilaments and the networks that they create are very dynamic. It's very easy to take actin filaments apart and build them back up again. And that allows some cells to be able to change their shape as needed. There is a motor protein that can crawl along actin microfilaments. And this protein is called myosin. Myosin is especially important in muscle cells. In muscle cells, we have microfilaments of actin and we also have bundles of myosin proteins. And these myosin proteins crawl along the actin filaments in order to cause a muscle contraction. The last of the cytoskeletal filaments are the intermediate filaments. These are not as long and thick as the microtubules, but they're not as short and narrow as the microfilaments. They're in the middle, which is why we call them intermediate. The important feature of intermediate filaments is that they are more stable than either the microtubules or the microfilaments. So this gives them a special importance when it comes to providing strength and stability to the cell. We find microfilaments in a network around the nucleus and also at junctions between cells where they're important for holding cells together. In multicellular organisms like humans, it's important that we can join cells together or keep cells connected to the structures around them. Cell junctions are the structures that hold cells together or to the environment. Cell junctions are formed by cell adhesion molecules. Cell adhesion molecules in the membrane of a cell adhere to or bind to the cell adhesion molecules on another cell or to fibers in the extracellular matrix, which is the structure around a cell, and they connect to the cytoskeleton inside the cell. This is important because if we just had cell adhesion molecules connected to the outside, but not inside the cell, they could get pulled out really easily. In order to make stable junctions, we need to connect from the outside of the cell through the membrane to the cytoskeleton, the support system of the cell. There are three main types of cell junctions with different functions. First, we have the adhering junctions. Adhering junctions are about making a strong connection between cells. These are connected to a lot of cytoskeletal filaments and the connections between the cells are strong. These are particularly important in any areas of the body that experience a lot of stress that could pull cells apart. Things like the skin or the muscles that are under a lot of force as they encounter the environment or during a contraction. You want those cells held together with a lot of adhering junctions. The second type of junction is a tight junction. A tight junction holds cells very closely together. This is to help prevent leaking between the cells. It's almost like it forms a zipper between two cells by pulling them really close together. These are important in areas like the skin, where we're trying to prevent things from leaking out, or the digestive tract, where we're trying to hold in digestive enzymes that we don't want to leak into our abdominal cavity. Any place we're trying to maintain a waterproof connection where nothing can leak between, we're going to find tight junctions. The last type of junction is less about holding two cells together and more about allowing communication between two cells. This last type of junction is called a gap junction. A gap junction opens a sort of tunnel between two cells so that signals can pass directly between the two cells without having to go outside into the rest of the environment. We find gap junctions in the muscle cells of the heart so that a signal to contract can spread quickly between the various cells of the cardiac muscle so that we get a nice coordinated contraction. 